Maybe listen to both sides of the news. Don't only listen to what you agree with. Sometimes it's good to listen to what you don't agree with because it'll shape your output. It'll make you a more well-rounded person. Hello and welcome to The Family Coaching. I'm Julia. I'm here with my husband, Gino. And if you want to learn how to piss off your spouse, you've come to the right place and the right topic because it, what is it like not even 10 30 this morning and we've already had like three challenging situations i think it's humid i think it's i think there's a storm coming now in. she's blaming yeah. the weather so do you see what i'm saying here right now <laughs> it's the language you use with your spouse and it's not only just the language it could be the body language we were going over one of our websites this morning and a picture of me shows up on the website now I like the picture. I'm on stage. I'm singing. I'm roaring. And she starts chuckling and giggling. Okay, at the it picture. was a little giggle. But actually, here's the thing. Go to juliangino.com about us and you look at it. I think it's a great photo. I love it. But it made me it made me it made me happy and a little giggly and you took it the wrong way. Okay, I, I took it the wrong way, <laughs> but I know what she means beneath that giggle. And it's the things we don't say. I think that's another topic is, is assuming what the other person's thinking. Okay. <laughs> I love getting him frustrated. You see what I'm saying? Love it's it. it's, it's <laughs> such a, it, I mean, I know she hasn't eaten. That's part yeah, of the problem. So true. she's hangry right now. Mm -hmm. She's she's hungry yeah. and add a little anger into that. And yeah. I think it's important. But in all seriousness, the language that you use with your spouse is so important. The things that you don't say, mm -hmm. the things that you do say, and maybe go back to the last show that we did about listening, because it comes down to listening also of things that people aren't saying. Well, the thing is, like, what you're thinking about your spouse actually affects your relationship. Uh, and and I, a lot of us don't even realize that. But we, if you go back to, right, to, to our thinking process and what we think about them, what we think about them when they first come in the room. But another thing is important, you know, is what you say about them in public. And I say this because I remember years ago, um, we were just married, maybe even just engaged, and you had the restaurant, and everyone used to come in and complain about their spouse. You know how it is to be married. Are you sure you want to get married? And I'm like, man, I hate this. And so that's what I hated. And I, and I wonder how many of us, maybe you listening or you, maybe you hear this, is what people talk about in general, you know how the old ball and chain they talk about, oh, you know, I got to ask the wife when I get home. And all of that stuff affects us, affects our marriage, and it affects other people's marriage and their view of marriage. And it's something, maybe it's a good time now to reflect on how you talk about it, how you talk about your spouse, how you think about him or her. Uh, <laughs> you laugh about all i have them. to do is look at her and she's <laughs> laughing i mean what does that tell you well it's... what what why does it affect your relationship gino it's because what we think about how the words we use it it you you react based off of that and so if if i see you and i'm irritated my reaction obviously is going to be negative and it's just a reflection at the end of the day it really is it's like okay what did i do today what did i say what did i think about and say, tomorrow I'm going to do this, this, and this. And it's just preparation. A lot of us do this when we go to work. Um, we do this with our kids. We, you know, we try to organize our life a certain way. And we really do forget about one of the most important relationships in our life, which is our marriage, which is our spouse. And we don't put enough effort and we don't put enough um, thought process into it, if you know what I mean, because they're just always right there. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll work on that later. But there's no time like now to start working on your relationship in the home because our kids see that and we're kind of trying to like break that cycle you know does that make sense breaking the cycle <laughs> because if all if i know is that I, my wife's laughed at me three times this morning so maybe we could break <laughs> that cycle but i'm going to utter two phrases that i think are really important to me and one of them i'm going to be doing an instagram short on but the other one that i used to hear all the time was happy wife happy life in the first several years i bought into that nonsense well there's some truth behind it there is yes but you need to make yourself happy first i think it's self-love that we talk about and it's very difficult if you don't love yourself or at least appreciate and like yourself you're never gonna going to uh, go out and make someone else happy that's the reality but the second one also i want you to write this one down because this one really 
as I was driving, I was listening to Dr. Benjamin Hardy on a podcast, and he said, your input shapes your output. And that's what Julie's been talking about the last few minutes, all of the input that she received early on. Oh, the marriage, the ball and the chain, complaining. If you have that, allow that input to affect your life, it will affect the output that you have. So when you, you do come home and you see your spouse, you'll be literally thinking about a ball and a chain around your leg and you're dragging it around. And that's what it comes with. But that input shapes your output has is, is it foundational to everything in your life. Whatever food you put into your mouth, whatever thoughts you put into your head, uh, whatever messages you're, you're, you're receiving, it's all going to get stored in there subconsciously and it's going to come out. So be careful what you're listening to. And I hate this advice when people say, turn off the news. Don't turn off the news sometimes. Maybe listen to both sides of the news. Don't only listen to what you agree with. Sometimes it's good to listen to what you don't agree with because it'll shape your output. It'll make you a more well-rounded person. And I think we have our certain biases when we go into them and that's all we listen to. Mm -hmm. And it's important when we do use language with our spouses to really reflect on how we're feeling. There's one other quote that I love to use in coaching. I don't think my wife loves it as much, but I love it. What people say is about them. What you hear is about you. And let that sink in for a second because my wife was laughing at me, right? Oh my gosh, time <laughs> out. It let, was she was giggling. It okay. was a little giggle. Can, can I, can Everyone I, listening is going to go on the website, look at it, and they're also going to have let, a little giggle. Let me finish the thought because this okay. is important. Yeah. What does it say about her? Maybe she was really happy at that moment. Maybe it made her feel proud. I, I don't know, but it's a reflection on what she's going on. The way I take it is really what I'm trying to get at. Mm. I could have been in a good mood this morning. I could have been like, oh, thanks. She's giggling because it makes her happy. But no, instead, I was stressed a little bit because I've worked on this website. I've had back-to-back -back calls. Someone didn't show up. I've got a singing lesson at 12, a call at one, call at two. So I also have to take a step back and become aware of how I'm receiving the information. And that's really important. And I think what people say is truly about them. And what you hear is really about how you are. So if you don't love yourself, if you really are having a rough time, you're going to take that message differently. And it's called an interpretation in coaching school. Yes, it's called an interpretation. We love to argue about that, but it's how you interpret certain things in life. And the interpretation is really important because if she's think coming at it and if she doesn't say anything and I think that she's making fun of me or she doesn't like the picture, that could really hurt the relationship going forward because I'm not going to share certain things. I'm not going to show her certain pictures. I don't want her input on the website if that's going to be the case, if that's the way I'm truly taking the information. Mm -hmm. I actually, I, I love you brought up the interpretation. I think that should be literally our next show because that is such a important topic, like you said, because I could say whatever I want how you take it is different. And so to come out of the conversation with an understanding of what I meant or you actually understand is important. Um, but getting back to the language, I don't think we realize the, the impact we have on ourselves, on the language we use about how we think about ourselves and um, and on our children. And you know, if, if you look at our, our headline, it says, um, to change the world, go home and love your family. And the, really the, the impact there is you're, you're breaking the cycle that I had mentioned earlier a lot of us, you know, we live our life, we had a certain childhood, we repeat it, and then our children repeat it, and then so on. And so really what that means when I read that, that, that quote is, how do I want my family life to be? And it does start with our thinking process, and it starts with our language. The, the language we use to our children about ourselves, the language we use about them. You know, when they, they spill something or drop something or break something, our, our reaction is usually how we were raised or it's the exact opposite because we're trying so hard not to, not to live that life. But sometimes to just sit back and have no reaction and then figure out, okay, what reaction do I want in this situation? What words do I want to actually let come out of my mouth? Because those words are so crucial to everyone around us at home. And I've actually uncovered that I, we can change that if we want. And I've done it over the past few years. And the kids sometimes think there's something wrong with me because I don't, I don't get mad with certain things. But we're able to change the language we use. I promise you, if I could do it, anyone in the world can do it. It just takes a reflection and a decision 
that I want to do it. So usually Julia likes to give you challenges every week. I'm going to challenge you because she's a homeschool mom. I think he's still upset she's with me about kids. the giggle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually not. <laughs> and because if that picture wasn't a good picture, then I would agree with you. But that picture was <laughs> kick ass. Go, well, go, go see for yeah. yourself. You see, she hates when I, I love the picture. I like yeah, it. And she, she can't accept I love sometimes. It. I think it's a great picture. <laughs> Anyway, it the just makes me giggle. That's all. <laughs> the challenge this week is important because Julia said one word. It's awareness. If you're not aware of the language you're using, if you're not aware of the actions you're taking, become responsible for those actions. Become aware of how you're speaking to your spouse. And I think more importantly to yourself, mm -hmm. are you constantly putting yourself down? Because if you're doing that to yourself, you're, you're, that's your input. That's what's going to be part of the output. Mm -hmm. That's really important. So awareness and ultimately become responsible. And next week we will be talking about interpretations. Mm -hmm. We've got some great stories about interpretations. Yeah. yeah. So even further with Gino's challenge, get a journal, get something at nighttime. And I mean, I actually do challenge you to write down the things you've said about yourself during the day. And when you read it, it's pretty horrifying. And I always give this to people and some people don't like it, but sometimes we say these terrible things to ourselves. Oh, I, I, why am I even bother? I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. All these things, right? Imagine saying the things you say to yourself, to your little daughter or son when they're trying to do something. Could you ever imagine saying to them, why would you even bother trying that? You're going to fail anyway. Whatever it is that you say. And that is horrifying, isn't it? Yes. But it's amazing when you look at that, you're like, wow, I'm saying it to myself. Shouldn't I treat myself a little better than that? Mm -hmm. And so that's a little challenge. Write it down, look at it, read it. And now imagine saying it to a little person in your life. Maybe that might change what you, what you say to yourself. Go to juliaandgino.com to learn more. Visit jakeandgino.com if you want to get into multifamily, you want to start investing in real estate. And finally, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family, and don't laugh at your spouse. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. See you next time.